Welcome back. Praise the Lord. Saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you're having a good day. This is going to be number 141, Do You Trust Me? And uh, let's do just uh, go to prayer before we start into the study. Heavenly Father, we do love you so much. We're so grateful for all that you do, for all your blessings to us, for your care over us. We do plead your blood around our families, Lord, around our children, our grandchildren, around the saints and the ministers and their families, Lord. Father, we just uh, pray your protection all around, Father. We pray for Israel and uh, what they're going through with this change in government right now, Father. Uh, that your will would be done. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and uh, we know that all things are needing to be done according to your will and your purposes and according to your word. And uh, we do pray for our president in America, Father. We pray for his cabinet. We pray for wisdom for them. Um, we pray for the people of America. We pray that they repent, Father, that uh, you will show mercy to those who will turn and repent before you, Father. And uh, just uh, give the saints of God a readiness, Lord, and strength that can only come from you. And we do pray for the lost of the world, Father, that they will be turned, uh, that there is a, a revival and an awakening, Father, and uh, that you have mercy on those souls that will turn now. In Jesus' name, be with us in this study. And uh, talking about, do you trust me? And I do want to read from Proverbs chapter 3 to start. And... Uh, Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the firstfruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. And her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion." So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken." 
withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. And, uh, you know, that Proverbs 3, 5 is something that the Lord's had me give you over and over. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. And I know I've shared a story before about uh, praying for my eldest son when he was out in the world doing things he shouldn't have been doing. And uh, over and over praying till I just got exhausted and lay back on my bed one day and just uh, spent, you know, just just done all I felt like I could do and just told the Lord, I don't know how to pray for him anymore. <laughs> and as soon as I said that and admitted that to the Lord, he spoke to me and said, do you trust me? And I had also relayed to you that at a revival meeting after that, that the pastor had had us all say out loud, I trust you, Lord, three times. So, you know, the Lord knows how to speak to us, and uh, he's just waiting for us to give it all to him sometimes. Um, we think we've got a magic formula to make things happen if we pray enough. There's even some organizations that tell you to say a prayer so many times, and you'll have this or that. But God doesn't work by our, our formulas. He works by our trusting in him completely for him to do things his way and for us to trust that that outcome is going to be a good outcome when we let him work. I know one time when my youngest son was <clears throat> in middle school, I had this job and I didn't get off till six. So between time school was out until that, he had this time unsupervised. And uh, he was at the age where it's not like you could... Uh, get a babysitter for him or something for the three hours to make sure, you know, all was going well there. And I ended up quitting a job by faith because I was so concerned about the trouble that could be gotten into that three-hour period when there was just no one around to watch over him. And um, I ended up in a job working as a secretary for a pastor 28 hours a week at $7 an hour, which obviously was not enough to even begin paying your bills, you know. And I can remember getting down to um, kind of that next check coming in. I realized I would just be mostly putting gas in my car to get back to work and picking up a few groceries. And uh, I actually just laid it before the Lord. I really, I was so used to to him coming through for me. It wasn't really complaining or whining. I just put it before him and said, well, Lord, this is really kind of like the widow in the Old Testament that just had that oil and meal because I am, this is how people get homeless. I'm to the point where if I don't pay my utility bills, that's going to get turned off. And then if I can't make my house payment, that's going to get taken back. So, you know, I could kind of see the picture here. Obviously, my job was not going to meet this, and uh, the Lord spoke to me to prepare a resume. Well, I had a license to teach, and uh, we were nine weeks into a school year, so I can remember kind of questioning him and saying, well, it's really too late to get a teaching job at this point, but he was firm about me doing my resume. So I prepared my resume and I didn't usually pick up newspapers, but I picked up a newspaper that day and in the uh, classifieds, there was a local school that was needing uh, a teacher in the field that I taught. 
So something had happened. And you know, the Lord just knew, this isn't just all coincidence that's happening. It's just that the Lord knows everything, you know. And uh, he he had me prepare that uh, resume, and I was ready to go, you know. I had it ready, so I put my little packet together and went out to uh, leave it at the office. That was all I was going to do, just a resume. Well, the superintendent had me come. This was like an emergency. They needed a teacher. This teacher had had a health problem come up and simply could not return to school. And um, so I just, the superintendent called me in there when he knew someone was leaving a resume and hired me on the spot. And I started work <laughs> that Monday. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes maybe. We have so many circumstances happening in the nation and around and um, in and of ourselves, we don't know what to do. When crisis comes, when change comes, if you lose your job, uh, if you don't know how you're going to pay your next bill, you've got to trust the Lord. And He's asking you right now, do you trust me? And uh, let's just say a quick little prayer for teachers and students right now while I'm thinking about teachers. Heavenly Father, we do just pray protection around our schools. We pray for strength for our teachers we pray for godly teachers in those school systems that will not bow their knee to anyone or anything other than you, Jesus. And we pray for those students. We pray for protection. We just uh, pray your hedge up in such a way that the enemy cannot send anyone in to those schools to do any harm, Father. Just protect them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we are going to have to trust him because we cannot control what is happening in this world. It has been prophesied, and it is happening. So, you know, you just have to think about it. Or when all these things are happening, are you going to be like Job, or are you going to be Job's wife? Are we going to be trusting God, or are we going to be cursing God? Are you going to be Lot or Lot's wife? Are you going to be Lot obeying to get out of a condemned world and not look back? Or are you going to look back like his wife did? She was still wanting to be a part of that world. She wasn't ready to leave the world behind. And you know, the Lord is requiring we leave the world behind. He wants us loving Him, loving His righteousness, and not the, this world's ways. And... Uh, are we going to be like Noah's family, obeying God and preparing to escape destruction, listening to the Lord's warnings, His warnings through His prophets and messengers? Or are we going to be in the number of the mockers and the scorners and the party-hardy number that they're just careless about the destination of their eternal soul? They don't want to think about it. Do you want the Lord? Do you trust the Lord? You know, trust Him with all of your heart now. And ward off the attacks on your mind and do everything God's way. And uh, train now to hear the voice of the Lord and obey our provision, protection, and eternal destination to be with Jesus in heaven are determined by our faith and obedience. You know, I've been praying for two weeks for someone interceding, and I found out today how discouraging their circumstance is and I was able to encourage them to trust the Lord now with all thine heart because that situation is something they can't control they can't do anything about it and uh, we have got to get to the end of ourselves thinking we can figure it all out and uh, that we can take care of everything because we just can't we can't do this without the Lord and I had more scriptures that I wanted to read about this, but I'm going to have to give it to you. John 15, 1 through 8. I've talked to you about abiding in the Lord and read these scriptures several times. So just whatever it is that is hindering you to trust Him, give it to Him now. Every care and concern, you can't fix it. You can do nothing without Him. And Jesus wants to know, do you trust me? If you need to give your heart to the Lord, do it today. Today is the day of salvation. We don't know if we have tomorrow. And uh, Acts 2.38, to obey and serve Jesus Christ.